Welcome to Family and the Beast channel. My name is Janet and this is Chloe Lingen. <laughs> Chloe is our taste tester. Remember all the ingredients and measurements that will be listed down below in the description box. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hi everyone. In today's video, we will be making some chicken chow mein, Guyanese style chicken chow mein. And here are the ingredients you will need to put this recipe together. For my veggies, I'm using some pak choy bhaji, and this is mainly the stem part I'll be using. I have some red onion, some scallions, I have some sweet peas, some sweet pepper, um, uh, both from the green and the red color. I have my carrots and some cabbage. And here I have my chow mein and my chicken that I will be seasoning in a few minutes and show you how to do that. I have some Chinese spice seasoning and some all-purpose seasoning and this all-purpose seasoning is from the Chief brand. Here I have my oil, I have some Chinese sauce, some sweet soy sauce and I also have some mild soy sauce, less salt. Here I have my oyster sauce. In this plate I have all the dry ingredients that I will be using today. Black pepper, all-purpose seasoning which is this. I have some chicken bouillon, I have some Chinese spice, which is this one over here. I have some complete seasoning, some garlic salt, some paprika, and here I have some adobo. I also have some brown sugar, and here I have my green seasoning. Now here is how I prepare my green seasoning. Now here is how to make your green seasoning and what you will need. I have some celery leaf, I have some spicy thyme, some bandania, I have some scallion roots. I only use the roots of the scallion to blend in my green seasoning. I have some garlic, sweet basil, I have two pieces of broadleaf thyme, I have one pimento pepper, a weary weary pepper, and here I also have some flavored pepper. So now we'll place all the, our ingredients into the blender. all the pepper, the bread leaf, the basil, the garlic, scallion roots, bandana, and our celery leaves. Now, if you want your green seasoning to be um, at a puree consistency, you will need to add some water. Now, if you don't want it to be pureed or you, and you just want it to be finely chopped, you can leave it just like this and cover your blender and start chopping it. Um, it's up to you and what you like. Now, today I will be using some finely chopped and I will also be using some at a puree consistency. So I'll just add in some water. Now we don't want to add in too much of water because you don't want it to be too watery or too much liquid in there. Now here's how I like my green seasoning to be. Now you'll just place this on the side and wait until we're ready for it. So I went ahead and combined all my sauces together in one bowl. And now we're gonna mix this and make sure that they are all combined. And to that, we will add in the brown sugar. You want to stir and make sure that it's all combined. It's not necessary for the sugar to be melted. Now that this is all combined, we'll place this on the side and to our next bowl, we want to combine all our dry ingredients together. And we'll mix to make sure that they're all combined. So now that we've combined all our ingredients together here and we've prepared them, we have our chicken. We're gonna bring the chicken close to us and now we will add in half of the dry ingredients we have combined in this bowl. Just make sure you have half of it. And we'll place the other half on the side. Now we will add in all of the green seasoning and we're gonna add in half of the sauces. Now you wanna give this a stir and make sure that the sugar is well mixed 
in here or it's um, not settled at the bottom of the bowl. You don't want to leave all the sugar in the bottom. You want to have some of it in the chicken. So I will add in half out of this as well here. And I'll place the other half on the side. Now you want to mix this to make sure that they're all combined. Now that we have our chicken here, we'll place this on the side and allow it to sit for about an hour to an hour and a half. In the meantime, you can go ahead and cut up your veggies if you haven't done so as yet. So the next step is putting your chow mein to boil. So I'm going to head over to the stove now. So guys, now that my water come up to a boil, I'm going to add in my chow mein. And to that, I'll add in some adobo. You can add in about a teaspoon or, or so. And I'll let you know what time I take this off the stove. I'm not going to cover it this time. I'll leave it open because I don't want it to overflow or I don't want it to get too soft so fast. So as soon as you drain your chow mein, you want to add some cold water on top. That way it will stop cooking from the heat that still is there. So you want to place another pot, frying pan or canary on the stove, whatever you're comfortable with. And turn your stove on back to medium high heat. And to that we will add in about a quarter cup of oil. Now we're going to allow the oil to come up to a nice hot temperature and then we'll add in the chicken. So when your oil come up to a nice hot temperature, you're going to add in your chicken and just give it a stir and make sure that it's all coated with the oil. And now we'll put the lid on and allow it to cook down and release some of that water that usually the chicken will release and we'll allow that water to dry back out before the next step so guys when the water dries out from the pot that was released you're gonna take your chicken down and you're gonna place it on the side now I've cut my chicken very small so the water that was released from the chicken was able to cook the chicken completely to the way I like it if you if you cut your chicken bigger than I did you might need to add some water to cook it this is the way I like to do it so I'll put this on the side now I'm gonna raise my heat to medium high again and here is how you want the chow mein to look when it's cooled down when you pick it up it should be nice and loose it shouldn't be sticky or sticking together now at this time you want to bring your dry seasoning and your sauce together close to you and you also are going to bring the veggies now to your pot, you're going to add in about two tablespoons of oil and you're going to crush two cloves of garlic in that. Now we want to fry this up a little. Allow the garlic to infuse a little bit in the oil. You don't want to add too much oil when you're frying up your chow mein because remember the chicken have a little bit oil that was left back from the fat and stuff that was um, in the chicken that released some excess oil. Now the first thing I'll add in is my carrots and my green peas. I like to add these in early. As you know, they are the hardest veggies and they will need some more time to cook. So we'll let them go about two to three minutes before we add in the other veggies. And now after two to three minutes, you will start adding in all the other veggies. Now I still did not add in the scallions. I really like to add that in at the very end of the cooking process. You want to mix all your veggies together and make sure that they are nice and steamed. I'm not going to add in any of the salt or any of the dry ingredients to the veggies because I don't want it to release any water. So I will make sure that I add that in to the very end as well. I just want my veggies to fry by itself without any other ingredients. Now I will allow all the veggies to fry together for about two minutes or so. I don't want them to be overcooked. I still want them to have that nice crunchiness. And after two minutes, I'll add in my chow mein. And I'll top that off with my chicken and my scallions, my sauce. And here my dry ingredients. Now I'm going to turn my stove off completely and I'll leave my pot on the heat and I'm going to start mixing my chow mein together 
and I'm going to make sure that all the ingredients and everything is well combined. So now you have a chance to taste and make sure that the salt is enough for you. And if it's not and you want to add some more, you can feel free to add some of the adobo or you can either use some of the garlic salt. Now, mine is perfect. I don't need to add anything else, but just in case you you guys take a little bit more salt than we do, I just want to make sure you know you have an option to add that in now. So this is all done here. I'm going to allow this to cool down and Chloe will try it and she will let you guys know how good it is. So see you guys in a while. Time to try it. Yummy. Bye, like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.